If you are starting in the payment industry and want to learn the basic concept, where should you begin? In this video, we look at fundamental concepts in payments, payment instruments, payment systems, and their modeling. What we will see applies to all kinds of payment instruments. So follow me till the end. Hi, my name is John Paul. I'm payment author and trainer and run the blog Paymentor.com. I'm co-founder of Pamrix, a Qualiope certified training organization and a career accelerator for payment professionals. I have over 17 years of experience in the payment industry and I'm still in love. But things have not always been that easy and lovely for me. It took me about four years to really understand domestic payments. So the information that I'm going to share with you in the next minutes is precious. If you follow me till the end, you will be able to understand fundamental concepts and that will enable you to grow your payment skills faster. Let's begin with the definition of a payment. What is a payment? According to the Bank of International Settlement, a payment is the payer's transfer of a monetary claim on a party acceptable to the payee. Typically, claims take the form of cash or deposit balances held at a financial institution or at a central bank. Put simply, a payment is a transfer of value from one party to another. The value transfer can be monetary like 10 units of currency, or it can be in digital form like a cryptocurrency. A payment transaction involves two end parties. On one side, the debtor or payer who sends the funds, and on the other side, the creditor or payee who receives the funds. An end party can be the sender or receiver of a payment. It is a party involved in any side of a payment transaction. Payments are generally made in exchange for the provision of goods or services between end parties or to meet legal obligations. Closely related to payments is the concept of payment instrument. In the expression payment instrument, the word instrument is added to payment. Let's look at its definition and see how it combines with payment. An instrument is defined as a means whereby something is achieved, performed, or furthered. It can be compared to a tool that facilitates the execution of a task. Tools make things very easy. You can do gardening or cooking without tools. You will spend a huge amount of time and energy to eventually achieve pretty limited results. But how easy things are when you have the proper tools. That is why humans are tool builders. Payment instruments facilitate payments and make fund transfers easy between the end parties involved. Payment instruments are tools to move value or money fast. Without payment instruments, paying will be very cumbersome. We learn in economic history that before creating payment instruments, people relied on barter to exchange value. But barter has many disadvantages and it's not practical at all. Without payment instruments, e-commerce will not be possible. Many things that we take for granted today will simply not exist. Payment instruments are without any doubt a great invention. Cash payment instruments are bank notes and coins. Non-cash payment instruments are checks, cards, credit transfer, cryptocurrencies, and so on. Payment instruments are the raw materials of payment systems. A payment system consists of a set of instruments, banking procedures, and typically interbank fund transfer systems that ensure the circulation of monetary or digital value. A payment system requires four things. One, a payment instrument like cash, checks, credit transfer, or a debit card. Two, the scheme rules that define the procedures, practices, and standards agreed between the payment service providers that join the system. Number three, 
a transfer mechanism to move the funds from one party to another. And finally, number four, a legal framework to guarantee irrevocable and unconditional finality, that is, the discharge of obligation between the debtor and the creditor. Payment systems operate essentially on two types of models, open-loop models and closed-loop models. In open-loop models, there are intermediaries between the end parties and the payment system. So, in open-loop models, the end parties access the payment system through the intermediaries. Things are different in closed-loop models, because in closed-loop models, there are no intermediaries between the end parties and the payment systems. So, in closed loop models, the end parties access the payment system directly. Let us consider closed loop models first. This is what a closed loop model looks like. The system is directly connected to end parties, the senders and receivers of funds. As we can see, there is no intermediary between the end users and the payment system. End parties establish a direct connection to the payment system and it is not possible to join the payment system as intermediary. This is the major difference between open and closed loop systems. In open loop systems, end parties access the payment system through intermediaries and in closed loop systems, the end parties have a business relationship and transact directly with the payment system. End parties are companies, merchants and individuals that join the system either as buyers or sellers of goods and services. Examples of closed loop systems are the traditional network of American Express, PayPal and the Bitcoin. Merchants and consumers join these systems directly and they don't need to go through an intermediary to transact with each other. Things are different for open loop models. Here, you see what an open loop model looks like. The system is usually compared to a hub and spoke model. It is connected to banks, payment service providers, or similar institutions which act as intermediaries. Banks are one type of payment service providers. In many regions of the world, it is possible for non-bank entities to provide payment services. As we see in this model, the banks or payment service providers are connected to end parties, the senders and receivers of funds. Only the intermediaries, banks and other payment service providers can become members or participants of the payment system. Open loop models yield the great advantage of allowing banks to transact with each other without direct relationships. When a new intermediary joins the system, it can exchange transactions with all the banks that are already in the system and vice versa. This allows open loop systems to scale rapidly. All end parties are in a way connected to each other through the payment systems and the intermediary banks. Now, you may wonder what is inside the payment system. Here, you see the generic model of a payment system at a country level. Payment systems are composed of many interbank systems, a central bank system in the middle. Central bank systems are at the heart of the system and they play a key role. The interbank systems are connected to central bank system. Payment service providers, generally the banks, can become participants of one or many interbank exchange systems. It is not mandatory for a bank to join all the interbank systems. They may not become members of certain interbank exchange systems. But each bank must have an account with the central bank and join interbank systems or central bank system as direct or indirect participant. A payment transaction begins and ends with end parties and the funds transfer happens through banks and other intermediaries which are connected through interbank and central bank systems. So, at country level, payment systems are generally modeled as a network composed of banks or similar financial institutions of interbank clearing systems that are generally called ACH or automated clearing house and of central bank systems. 
Interbank transfer systems usually implement clearing mechanisms and are connected to the central bank systems. They are referred to as ancillary systems in contrary to central systems operated by the central bank. Central bank systems implement the settlement mechanism. Now, why do we need clearing and settlement systems? For cost reduction, effectiveness, and risk management. To understand what clearing and settlement mechanisms are, I refer you to the PEMRIX channel. There you find videos where we explain these key concepts in a very simple manner. Now, let's consider core non-cash payment systems in one country to illustrate what we just said. We will look at the payment market infrastructures for the US dollar, so the payment systems of the United States. The overall structure looks like the generic model we considered before. Isn't that interesting? In the middle, we see FedWire, the system operated by the central bank in the USA, that is called Federal Reserve Bank or simply the Fed. Around FedWire, we see interbank clearing systems in the United States. They are called ancillary systems, while FedWire is called central system. All interbank systems must use FedWire to settle their transactions. There are two high value payment systems in the United States, Fedwire, the RTGS system, and CHIPS. CHIPS is a large value payment system that implements continuous net settlement. CHIPS stands for Clearinghouse Interbank Payment Systems. It is owned by the financial institutions that use it. The Federal Reserve Bank also operates the National Settlement Service that is used for the settlement of ACH transactions after netting in the different regional systems. ACH, remember, stands for Automated Clearing House. It is a generic name of clearing systems used for low-value or retail payments. There is another ACH system called EPN or Electronic Payments Network. It is operated by a private sector operator, the Clearing House Payments Company. Other market infrastructures in the USA are the checks clearing system and the car networks. The check clearing systems are used for the interbank transmission of clearing of checks, bill of exchanges, and promissory notes. These instruments are all settled in FedWire through the National Settlement Service system. The car networks are of multiple types. We have not represented all of them so as not to make the diagram more cumbersome. There are Visa and MasterCard for debit and credit cards, and there are closed-loop networks like Discovery and American Express. Closed-loop networks are not connected directly to central systems. They rely on settlement banks that are participants to FedWire for the settlement of their transactions. Finally, we see CLS. The CLS system is used to process dollar legs of foreign exchange transactions. The continuous link settlement system is used for the settlement of foreign exchange transactions in central bank money. CLS was created to eliminate the risk associated with the foreign exchange settlement across time zones. Cross-border payments go through SWIFT or the car networks. With such a model, isn't it simple to understand and study payment systems in any country? Please. Post a comment below and tell me what you think about it. The great thing is you can use this model to easily identify the key market infrastructures in any country in the world. Here is a similar model for France. We have central bank systems in the middle, so Target 2 and TIPS, that are operated by the European Central Bank. Target 2 is used for large value and urgent transfers between banks and CHIPS is used for the settlement of instant payments. Around the central bank systems, we see the interbank clearing systems used for the clearing of domestic payments, of domestic payment instruments like the checks, the credit transfer, and the direct debits. It is the same structure, and this shows that this model is really powerful. Let's again consider the generic model of payment systems at the level of a country. This is really a powerful model that you can use to identify and study the payment market infrastructures 
of any country. Why not begin with the country where you live? With the help of this model, can you describe your country's payment market infrastructures? Please do so and tell us how it works by posting a comment below. In the next video, you will get a secret, a very powerful tool that can help you to study any domestic payment system anywhere in the world. To finish this video, I want to remember you that the Payment Mastering Program is now open. Register now before it is too late. It is a limited time offer. The Payment Mastering Program is only open for a few days and then we close registration and start the class. So do not waste time. Do not procrastinate. Click, click, click the button below this video. If you join the program, you will make staggering progress and that will create many opportunities and possibilities for your career. See you in the next video.